I once ran a team of engineers that owned a real-time notification service. It took five developers, three weeks, and 750 lines of infrastructure as code to get the notification service live. And all it did in the end was send messages. Hi, I'm Alan Helton. I'm an AWS serverless hero. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build push notifications the easy way. I'll walk you through how to use EventBridge API destinations with Memento topics and orchestrate workflows with step functions. And I'll tie it all together with a game where we catch a squirrel. With that, let's get started. So let's start by looking at the game first. Now here you see on the screen, there's a little squirrel that's running around the screen. And over on the right hand side, you see me, Fluffy Bear, at level one. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be clicking this squirrel and we're gonna watch him move around. I'm just gonna keep clicking him. And you might be thinking to yourself, this is a pretty simple demo. And you're right, it is. There's beauty and simplicity. Now, if you saw, I clicked on it a few times and my level changed from one to two, and now it just changed from two over to three. Now that means it's doing something behind the scenes because we weren't really waiting for anything as this scroll was moving around. It just kind of happened as we continued to click. So what does that look like? In order to do that, we're gonna have to take a look at the architecture diagram. Now the architecture diagram for this, it's actually a multi-phase. Now, like I said, there's beauty and simplicity. That does not mean the whole thing is simple. Our user experience is simple. Behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. Now, what we saw that game was a simple web form that was rendered inside of Lambda and served down to the browser. It built the HTML with some very important information in it and sent it down uh, to the browser and the browser rendered the HTML. It was loading user information so we could see that level. Uh, and then it was also uh, putting up some subscriptions to get that interactive piece going. Now, uh, over here inside of the game, let me zoom in a little bit. Inside of the game, all we saw were two things. We saw a squirrel moving around on the screen, and then we saw my username and the level changing. Now, how did that happen? Because all I was doing was clicking on the squirrel, but other things were, uh, were changing. Now, what we were doing was behind the scenes, we were subscribing to Memento Topics to get that real-time notification experience inside of the game. And so what that means on the server side, when the squirrel is moved, it has to push down the new location to the browser. So it uses Memento Topics to say, here's the new location of the squirrel, please display it on the screen. Also, we do the same kind of thing with the user level we subscribe to say, give me updates for this specific person whenever there is one available. Now, when we click on the squirrel, it didn't look like it was doing anything, which again is part of the design. It's kicking off an async workflow. And inside of that async workflow, we're, connect we're hitting API gateway and it is triggering an async execution of a step function workflow. So it ties directly from API gateway to step functions and kicks it off asynchronously, meaning we're not waiting for the process and let you carry on chasing squirrels. So inside of step functions, this is where some of that magic really happens. Uh, this is where we're gonna be using EventBridge API destinations to natively communicate with Memento Topics, which is a third-party service that handles communications with the browser. So what we do, we jump straight into it. We check our Memento cache to see, do we already have the player data in there? And are they trying to click on the active location of the squirrel? So for this, we're not actually using EventBridge API destinations, but rather we're using a piece of functionality inside of Step Functions itself to communicate directly with HTTP APIs. So this time we're calling the Memento cache synchronously to see, do we have the latest data? Uh, if yes, then we're going to go down and we're going to do a little bit of processing. Now, this is actually just a uh, rendering from the Step Functions Workflow Studio itself. And uh, you can get this. I didn't draw this. I wish I did. I wish I had diagramming skills this nice. Uh, but this is something that AWS provides for you directly inside of the console. Uh, so we go in here. We check to see, are we uh, clicking on the correct squirrel? And then if that answer is yes, we have our branching logic to say, okay, let's go and give that user some experience points. When we uh, do that, we save the new experience points 
inside of DynamoDB. And here's a really cool thing that you can do with EventBridge API destinations. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we always have the latest information in the cache, basically invalidate the cache, but we don't want to do a whole lot of extra work to get that up to date. So what we use is we use DynamoDB streams and EventBridge pipes to push any changes inside of DynamoDB directly into the cache. So you can see on our diagram, we go from DynamoDB to a stream, to a pipe, straight to Memento. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna transform the data straight from DynamoDB and shove that into the cache so we can say that my user now has 10 experience points and now I'm level four. That way when we go and click on another scroll, we already have that information hot and ready to go inside of the cache. But there's no code involved. This is all events. This is all asynchronous events. Let's you play the game without any delays. So that's one way that we use EventBridge API destinations is with a pipe from an async stream. Now, another way that we use EventBridge API destinations is setting that new location of the squirrel. This is in our uh, other path here, our other logic path, where we've clicked on the squirrel, now we need to send it to a new place on the screen. So we randomize wherever we want that squirrel, and we use our EventBridge API destination just via a simple put event call in EventBridge. And it goes, it connects directly to Memento Topics via a rule. And again, the API destination is the target of that rule, which can communicate directly with the HTTP API and service. So no code there. This is again, this is something that we've set up one time. We've told EventBridge, how do I connect and communicate with this third party service? And from there, it's just dropping an event on the screen. That's all. So in our workflows, all we have to do is natively call put events and done. And what that's gonna do is it's going to send the new location of the squirrel, or if you've leveled up, it's going to send the new level all the way down to the browser for you directly from the back end. So you don't have to worry about any sort of connection management, figuring out what connection belongs to which user. It's all handled for you. It's all using put events. It's all using native event bridge. So cool. So now let's jump over to the AWS console and see what it actually looks like. Everybody likes looking at diagrams, but I'm pretty sure we like looking at the actual real thing a little bit more. So this is the step functions console inside of AWS. And what we're looking at here is every time I click on a squirrel, we have a new execution that runs. So I'm going to click on the most recent one. And what I love about step functions is that it shows you all the steps that were taken in order to, or all the steps that were taken through that specific execution. So in this specific execution that we're looking at, this means I didn't click on the active squirrel. That means somebody else could have been in there or maybe my screen delayed and the squirrel had already moved. So it didn't do anything because I really only want to give credit and points to one person for an individual squirrel location. So let's look at an execution that did work, which is here. Now, how do you know inside of step functions what happened? Follow the green. So up here at the top, we have our uh, connection, our synchronous call to Memento to pull the data out of the cache. Then down here, we pass our item potency check, which means, yes, this was the active squirrel. And down here, we're loading the information out of the cache. So we pull strain off of DynamoDB. We update our user, uh, our user XP. And what that's gonna do, if you remember, that's going to write the new XP and it's gonna write the new level inside of DynamoDB. That's going to cause that DynamoDB stream to trigger and then subsequently the pipe to run and then it's gonna update our cache for us automatically with no code. And then we're gonna say, did we level up? Yes, we did. And we're gonna do one more of those calls where this is a EventBridge put events call. It's gonna trigger our EventBridge rule, which calls our API destination which then pushes a notification straight down to the browser for us. Again, no code, no connection management. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. 
uh, with real-time notifications, with push notifications. When you're connecting services like Memento Topics with the powerhouse of a service that's EventBridge, it's just dropping an event. You can fan out to hundreds or thousands of active connections all at one time by dropping a single event with four lines of configuration. And that covers it. We've basically accomplished in 200 lines of code what a team of five developers did in three weeks. Check out the link to the code if you want to recreate this on your own. And if you want to read more about real-time notifications, I talk about this a lot on my website. You can find both of these and more resources linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want more hands-on technical content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the AWS Developers YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.